Welcome back to the garage guys. I'm Damien and this is the Bible. With the prototype arms completely built and having built some jigs so that we could recreate them, it's time to put these things to use. See if we can make another set of arms just like the prototypes. After removing the prototype arms from the jigs, I bolted all the new pieces in for the new arms. With everything bolted in, I then held the substructure in place, making sure it lined up just like the prototype. That being the case, I trimmed everything to match and started coping the substructure. Once I was relatively sure everything matched up, I finished out the substructure by closing up all the openings that I had left open. After welding, I had to sand everything smooth so that the plate would sit flat on the arm. I also welded in the bung into the DOM for the heim joint at the steering knuckle. Then after sanding that smooth and letting it cool, I ran the tap in and out just to make sure the threads were clean. Next I installed the bung onto the jig and started mocking up the arm again. I tacked the arm together and inspected. Not being totally satisfied, I broke the tacks and tried again. The second time worked like a charm. Now it's time to weld this puppy up. I also added the small bridge near the frame mounts while it was easy to get to. Then I sanded everything smooth. Next it was time to add the front rounded edge. This is not for aerodynamics, it's more like a bumper or push bar to protect the arm from rocks, trees, or critters. While I'll be seam welding these on later, I do stitch them in place at the junctions to ensure the solid connection with the arm. Once the tube was on and the arm cooled to the touch, I disassembled the arm out of the jig and moved on to the lower arm. Similar to the steps for the upper arm, I started off with bolting the, all the little mount pieces into the jig. As you can see, the ridge piece is bolted to the high end, and then I'll lay the substructure into the jig. I will say the pieces were tight in the jig. In fact, it was so tight, I needed to do a little trimming to make everything fit. Sure, I could put everything together and with the help of a clamp, but I'd rather the pieces fit together like a puzzle and not need to be forced into place. So I took the time needed, trimmed everything ever so slightly to make sure everything fit like it should. With the pieces fitting properly, it's time to weld them up. Just like the prototype and the upper arm, this arm is gonna get the bumper tubes too. The only exception is that these half round tubes go on the front and back. Don't ask me why I put them on the back. It was just something I did in the moment.
Then it was time to cut the plate for the top and bottom of the arms. So I got out the old templates, made sure they fit the new arms. They did, so I marked out the pattern on what was left of the plate. Then I pulled out my Evolution metal cutting skill saw and started making cuts. Um, I'm gonna break out the grinder with a cutoff wheel to get some of these uh, these other cuts, these smaller cuts. Um, I did pick up from Home Depot one of these uh, rigid like diamond blades for metal. And so I'm going to give that a shot today and see how well it works. It's worth a shot, I guess, right? See what happens. All right, let's do this. See what happens. I do like this skill saw for long, straight cuts. But there are many fine little cuts that need to be made. And for that, I typically like to use the cutoff wheels. I know, I know. I'm going to clamp it. Check this out, the vibrations are actually turning the camera's tripod. Uh, all right, so I gave it a shot. As you can see, I took it back off because it is slow. I hate to say it, the Harbor Freight uh, cutoff wheels, the abrasive ones, are faster. But uh, I'll try it again, um, maybe a little later. If you guys got a better idea, if there's a decent one out there, let me know. Um, I'm interested. Uh, just this one from Rigid, um, at the moment, I, I'm not too happy with it. So uh, I guess it was worth a shot, but. Back to the arms and fitting the plates. The wraparounds need to be bent so that the plate would sit flat. For that, I use a crescent wrench and a vise, but I also broke out the hammer a couple times to help out. There's a lot of cutting to do. Man, I wish I had my plasma. I did need to do some fine trimming to get the plate to fit right, but once that was done, things went together really well. With the pieces cut, it's time to start fitting them. There was still some trimming to do, but the hard part is over. In case you were wondering, I do weld the insides as well. Once everything is tacked together, final welding starts. Now to finish up the upper arm. It's the same process as before, trim to fit. Then tacks. Then final welding. I will say this, in times like this, I'm glad I got the bigger welder. The constant welding I'm doing on these arms would tax the duty cycle of a smaller 110 volt welder, but this Workman 220 is a champ. 
While the plate covers most of the openings in the arms, I do have a few small holes and cutouts, so I made some small plates and covers to, to close them up. With the openings filled in and everything welded, it's time to start grinding. This step took well over an hour between the grinding and sanding, but in the end, the arms came out pretty good. All right, um, here's the finished product. Well, not really quite finished yet. I still have a little bit of sanding to do on some of this stuff, but uh, I hate that the mill scale looks like, makes it look uneven. Uh, but yeah, so I just need to finish off that a little bit. I am thinking about grabbing a huge, uh, like a flapper wheel or something and just planing this thing off so it doesn't have that uneven kind of, you know, the uneven kind of uh, look from the sanding. But everything else seems pretty decent. There are a couple of low spots uh, I'll fill in and then resand it. But uh, here's the top ones. Um, they actually came out a lot uh, better than I thought. Very, very close as far as those are concerned. Some of the some of the little angles are slightly off, but that's that's cosmetic. 100% cosmetic. Not as many low spots, but there is a couple low spots to fill. But yeah, anyway, it's all pretty good. That's all I have for this video, guys. I'd like to say I appreciate you guys taking the time to join me along with this video. If you could do me a favor and leave me a like for this video, that would really help me out. I appreciate it. Uh, apparently it does something with YouTube and maybe even grow my channel a little bit. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them in the comment section. I love answering those and interacting with you guys. That's always fun. But until the next time, I'm Damien, and this is The Bible Book.